before you uh, this afternoon. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to minister your word to your people. We surrender this morning, and we ask, Father, that you would take over. We pray in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. The title of my talk this morning is called Show Up. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, show up? Tell him to show up. Just show up. <laughs> show up. Now, this last week we talked about the elements of crisis. This week I want to look at the believer's reaction in a time of crisis. How is a believer supposed to react in a time of crisis? The doctor said that you have a year to live. Your child is out doing drugs. Your marriage is upside down and you're in the verge of a divorce. You're feeling depressed and even suicidal. You're, you're going through financial hardship. Or a loved, per, a loved one, someone that you love and appreciate it, passes. How is a believer supposed to react in times of crisis? And so in 1 Samuel chapter 17... We're introduced to a young man called David. Now, let me tell you a little bit about David. David is a young shepherd boy. A young shepherd boy. David is also serving at his father's house. He is serving his father. If the father asked him to go in, you know, there was no cars back then, but let's say he was in a modern world. He stayed at his parents' house. The dad would say, hey, David, go and wash the car. Hey, David, go and pick up some groceries from, uh, from Walmart. You know, kind of like that. So David is at his dad's house. He's serving his dad. And then all of a sudden, his dad gives him a task to do, a chore, to go somewhere and to deliver some bread to his brother's. In other words, David is um, Uber Eats. <laughs> David is, is Uber Eats. His, his father gave him an order to take to his brother, and now he's taking the order to his brother. And so, interestingly enough, David finds himself in the middle of a crisis. As David is taking this bread to his brothers, David finds himself in the middle of a crisis. And remember last week we said crisis was unexpected, negative life event. Okay. And so David is in the crisis. What is the crisis? Well, the crisis is a giant man named Goliath. A giant man. People say that this man was... Um, uh, nine feet tall. Different resources will tell you different heights for, for Goliath. But imagine the tallest NBA player, but even taller than that. And so this man is a giant. And so David finds himself in front of this man, this giant, talking. Um, Goliath, Goliath is not just a man. He's a champion. He is experienced, and this man is a killer. And so when you look at 1 Samuel uh, 17, uh, it's not on the screen, but you look at verse 4, verse 9, and verse 16, it tells you, it describes Goliath, and Goliath is insulting people of God's army. So far, is that okay? Again, the crisis is unexpected, negative, and it won't go away because Goliath has been insulting God's people for 40 days. He spends 40 days insulting God's people, 40 days. Have you ever been in a situation that just won't go away? Have you ever been in a crisis where it seems like no matter what you do, the crisis is, is still there? You try to involve different people in it, you try to numb the pain. You try to drink. 
You try to talk to people. You try to engage in different things. But the crisis is still there. It won't go away. Sometimes that's just how life is. Sometimes the crisis of life, that's just kind of how, how things are. And so this morning, what I want to do, I want to share some lessons uh, from the life of David of how David reacted in his time of crisis. I will share one of them with you today, and I will share the other two next week. But the first lesson we can learn that uh, help, helps us to understand how to react in a time of crisis, the first lesson is, get ready for this, this is simple, David showed up to the fight. Simple. This message that I'm preaching today may be the simplest me message I've ever preached in a while. David showed up to the fight. If you're writing, write this, write this down. Crisis is never a time to hide. On the contrary, crisis is a time to show up and to be present. Let me say it again for those who are writing. Crisis is never a time to hide. On the contrary, crisis is always a time to show up and to be present. Can you look at somebody again and say, just show up? Just show up. The crisis of your life, I know it's tough, but I'm here to encourage you to just to show up to the fight. Show up to the battle. I know what the doctor said, but I'm, but I'm telling you to show up. I know that your marriage is upside down, but I'm telling you to show up. I know you have financial problems, but I'm telling you to just show, show up. Show up to the fight. Show up to the battle. Show up to the fight. And you won't believe how many people in life, when crisis comes, they just disappear. They just disappear. You look for them. You don't, you don't find them. You won't believe how many fathers, when crisis hits in the family, the father is just nowhere to be found. You won't believe how many mothers, when there's a crisis in their family, they're nowhere to be found. You won't believe how many depressed people who go through depression and cr the crisis comes, they give up, or even worse, they commit suicide. But this morning, I'm telling you, you have to show up to the fight. Show up to the fight of your life. You may show up, you may show up sometimes unprepared. You may show up sometimes under-resourced. You may show up however you want to show up or pull up. Just make sure you come to the fight. And that's exactly what David did. David saw an opportunity. While every else, everyone else was hiding, while everyone else was afraid, David took the opportunity. And David says, I'm going to show up to this fight. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. I wanted you to, to notice David's reaction. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail on account of, of this man. Your servant will go in. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. No one else is showing up. No one else is willing to stand. David looks around. Y'all not gonna, y'all see this man? David looks around. Y'all don't see this man that's, that's insulting us? And David says, if y'all not gonna fight, if you're not gonna come up to the fight, I'm gonna come. I may not be prepared. I may be small, but you know, I have a feeling that what David did, he looked at his God and he looked at the crisis. He looked at the God, he looked at the crisis. He looked at his God, he looked at the crisis, and he says, I'm going to fight. Not on the basis of who I am, not on the basis of what I have, but on the basis of the God that I serve, on the basis of the most high God. I'm going to go and I'm going to fight this man. 
I'm going to show up to the fight. And I'm here to encourage somebody. Show up to your battle. Show up to your fight. Show up to the fight. Show up to the fight of your life. And this is important because we're living in a generation where our young people, we're not showing up anymore. Suicide rates are through the roof. And so at the first sign of crisis, we're giving up. At the first sign of crisis, we're saying, I can't do this anymore. But this morning, I, 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 I pray that God would raise a generation of, of Davids who will say, I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to fight the fight of my life. I'm going to fight. Let me give you three reasons why you should show up to the fight and then after that we'll get a chance to pray this morning are you ready to pray church are you ready to pray this morning i'm going to give you an opportunity to pray because i feel like god is is birthing prayer in this place this morning i want to give you three reasons why you should show up to the fight of your life number one you should show up because the enemy is going to show up can i teach you something about the enemy our enemy satan Satan will never miss an opportunity to show up in your life and to disrupt your life. Never. He is relentless. From the time you get up in the morning to the time you sleep, and sometimes even when you're sleeping, he's working overtime. So if he's showing up, why not us? Why should we not show up? If he's showing up, why should we not show up? You see, Goliath, the reason why Goliath was taunting God's people because no one else was showing up. And so because no one else showed up, he was comfortable coming every single day for 40 days to try and to challenge God's people. The Bible calls Satan the accuser. He is the accuser. Satan, the devil, our adversary, he is called the accuser. Look at Revelations chapter 12, verse 10. It says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down. The one who accuses them before our God day and night. Satan, the accuser, he never misses an opportunity to accuse you and I. As a matter of fact, he's accusing day and night. And so when you don't show up to the fight, if you don't show up in times of crisis, the crisis will be there and it'll be comfortable there. The drinking problem, if you don't challenge it, if you don't address it, it'll stay. The sin in your life, if you don't show up and you address it, it'll stay. It won't go nowhere. I remember a time in middle school. Um, how many people know that I was bullied in middle school? Did you know that? They bullied me in middle school, y'all. It was really bad. <laughs> I remember a time in middle school, um, I was being bullied and uh, the bully said to me while I was walking home, he said to me, um, uh, tomorrow I'm going to fight you. Tomorrow I'm going to beat you up. me. I was so afraid. I was so scared. I went home. I could not eat. I could not drink. It was the only thing on my mind. I could not sleep. The only thing that was on my mind, I'm about to get beat up tomorrow. And so the next day, I show up to school afraid. And I think that day, I tried to give my parents every excuse in the world for me not to go to school because I was afraid of the bully that said he was going to beat me up. And so I went to school. <laughs> I went to school, and then, but I went to school, I'm kind of walking very carefully because I don't want to encounter my bully because I know he's going to beat me up. And so what I do is I try to take alternative routes. If I, if I, if I was going to go here, I try to go around so I wouldn't meet with him. 
And unfortunately, the bullying went on for the rest of the semester. I wish I could have told you that I stood up to the bully. Knowing what I know now, I would have stood up to the bully. Because you see, that's how bullies are. That's how the enemy is. If you don't stand up to the enemy, the enemy is going to be comfortable challenging you. If I know what I knew now, I would have stood up to him. Even if he beats me up, I don't care. But at least then, he would know that I'm brave enough to stand to him. If I knew then what I know now, I would have faced him and I would have showed up to the fight. And so some of us, we don't show up to the fight. And because we don't show up to the fight, we give up, we get discouraged, the crisis comes, and then the crisis stays. The crisis says, oh, okay, you're not going to challenge this? Okay, and then the crisis stays. Nothing ever happens, and then Goliath is just like this for 40 days. So the first reason you, sh you should challenge the crisis is because the enemy is always going to challenge you. Number two, why should you show up? The second reason why you should show up is because you are guaranteed to lose when you don't show up. Write this down. Half of your battle is won by just showing up. <laughs> Half of the battle is won by just showing up. Because there's a psychological part of just showing up where you show the enemy, I'm not afraid. There's a psychological part of showing up when you say to the problem, I know you've been there for a long time, but I'm not afraid. I know this has been in my family for a long time, but I'm not afraid. I know you've been standing and defying the army of God for a long time, but I am not afraid. I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight. If you don't show up, you never get the opportunity to fight. And therefore, you will always lose. Just like a, a basketball game or any fight, any battle. The team who does not show up to the game or to the fight or to the competition is automatically disqualified. You give up your rights for a victory because you have, you have not stepped up to the plate. You didn't show up in the fight of your life. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Holy Spirit, give us the strength to show up to the fight of our lives. Give us the strength, God, when crisis comes, when crisis hits our lives, God. Give us the strength to show up and to say, God, I'm here for the fight. And you know what God is saying? God is saying your job is to show up. His job is to provide the victory. Oh, come on, that's a good place to say amen. Your job is to show up. His job is to provide the victory. All David had to do was to show up. He wasn't prepared. He wasn't equipped. But he showed up to the fight. He showed up to the fight of his life. Why should you show up to the fight of your life? Number one, the enemy is always going to show up. He is called the accuser of the brethren. Number two, you are guaranteed to lose if you don't show up. And number three, the third reason why you should show up to the fight of your life. Are you ready for this one? The third reason why you, show up to the, you should show up to the fight of your life is because when we show up and fight, we conquer in Jesus Christ. When we show up and fight, if you are a believer, we conquer in Christ. Can I teach you some Bible? If you're here, can I teach you some Bible? Can I teach somebody some Bible here? Let me teach you some Bible. Are you ready for this? Let me teach you some Bible. In this story, the story of David and Goliath, David is what they call a type of Christ or a shadow of Christ. Is that all right so far? 
What is a type of Christ? A type of Christ is an Old Testament figure that foreshadows Jesus Christ. That's a type of Christ. And so let me give you an example. Adam is a type of Christ. Why is Adam a type of Christ? Because Adam introduced something to the world and Jesus also introduced something to the world. Adam introduced sin and death. Jesus introduced his spirit and life. So Adam, when you read the story of Adam in the Old Testament, you should always go back to Christ. Adam is a type of Christ. Let me give you another example. Job. There was a man by the name of Job. He was, Job was a, um, he suffered. And Job is also a type of Christ because Job, he suffered righteously. He didn't do anything, yet he suffered. Just like Christ, Jesus Christ, he didn't do anything, yet he suffered. So when you read in the Old Testament, there are these figures in the Old Testament. And I remember I was teaching here a few months ago, and I tell you how to study your Bible. One of the things that you need to do when you're studying the Bible, always look for Christ. Always look for Jesus. Whether you're reading in the Old Testament or, or the New Testament, always look for Christ because Christ, he is hidden in the Old Testament. And so David is a type of Christ for many reasons. David is a type of Christ because David is a warrior. Jesus Christ is also a mighty warrior. Number two, David is a shepherd. Jesus Christ is called the good shepherd. So when you, when you look at the life of David, you see all of these similarities between David and Christ. Number three, David is a type of Christ because David defeated his enemy with his personal weapon. The same way Jesus Christ defeated his enemy with his personal weapon called his blood. Does that make sense, everyone? And I love these similarities in the Bible because when you read the Word, this is why I love the Bible, everything connects. Everything makes sense. And so David, who lived close to a, a few thousand years before Jesus Christ, even the life of David was a foreshadowing of the Christ that was to come. And so here's the last similarity that I see between the life of David and Christ is that David, his victory the victory that he won over Goliath carried over not just for David, the whole army won the victory because of one man. Does that make sense? David won the victory. It was his efforts that the victory was won, but the victory not only carried to David, he brought the victory to the whole army. So through one man, everyone received the victory. The same way for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he offered up his own blood once and for all, and now he has conquered death, sin, and Satan, but his victory wasn't just his victory. Through the victory of Christ, he has given you and I the victory, even though he accomplished the work, he accomplished the work, but it applied to the whole world, to whoever believes in him, he has given the power to become a child of God. Does that make sense, everyone? So David is a type of Christ. Why is this important? Because just like David was triumphant over Goliath, you and I, come on, say you and I, come on church, say you and I, 
You and I, we are also victorious over the enemy, over sin, and over death. What does that mean? That means when you face a crisis, go into the crisis knowing that you are already victorious. When you face an alcohol addiction, go into the alcohol addiction knowing that you're already victorious in Christ. When you go into a personal crisis and your marriage is already upside down, go into it knowing that you are already victorious through Christ and so in Romans chapter 8 verse 35 and 37 pay attention to this because I'm, I'm I'm trying to set you up for prayer and Paul here is talking about different things that can potentially separate a believer from Christ in, in other words, pay attention, in other words, he's talking about different crises, different life events that can separate someone from Christ. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? And then it starts to list the different types of crisis. Tribulation, trouble, persecution, famine nakedness, danger, or sword. So after I name all of this, you're going to say no, all right? After I, I say the crisis, you're going to say no. Who will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? Will tribulation, will trouble, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who who loved us and so here it's talking about the different types of crisis there's emotional crisis tribulation or trouble there is financial crisis uh, persecution or famine there's physical crisis nakedness or danger and the bible says uh, it doesn't matter if it's physical crisis uh, it doesn't matter if it's emotional crisis it doesn't matter if it's a financial crisis uh, nothing uh, can separate you from the love uh, of of God because he uh, overwhelmingly conquered uh, if you know what I'm talking about uh, come on and shout Jesus come on and shout Jesus come on and shout Jesus now let's get practical let me get practical with you because they say preachers we're not practical enough and so showing up is going to mean something different for each and every person here showing up for some people it may mean that you need to show up in prayer this crisis that you're going through it may mean that you you need to show up in prayer for some other people it mean it means that you need to show up and just serve somewhere serve at a church serve God's people somewhere somehow and for someone else if you are a father and there's crisis in your house maybe you don't need any more prayer because we we tend to over spiritualize things and then you're in you know you're fasting you're doing this maybe that's not what you need maybe you just need to be present in your house with your son with your daughter maybe that's what, how you need to show up for some other people maybe it's not that if you're dealing with mental health watch this if you're dealing with mental health maybe you need to just go and be on someone's couch that's how for you to sh that's the way for you to show up you need to just go talk to a Christian therapist and then talk about the trauma that you had to go through when you were little. Talk about the abuse that you had to go through when you were little. To some people, that's what showing up means. For some people, you showing up, it means you taking that exam again, even after you failed multiple times. For me as a pastor, me showing up means me being faithful in the little that God has given me. So when you come here on a Sunday morning, even if I have five people here, I'm preaching the same message. 
even if there's 500 people here, I'm preaching the same message. That's my way of showing up. My way of showing up is to take care of God's flock. If someone is in need, I need to be able to take care of them. My way of showing up is to give you a call. If things are going bad with you, my way of showing up is to be there and be a help to people in need. That's my way of showing up. Different people will have different ways of showing up. Some of us, if you're going through some types of financial crisis, you showing up means you sitting down and taking a look at your finances and saying, what am I doing wrong? Because I'm living from paycheck to paycheck. I'm borrowing money. For some of us, showing up means I need to sit down and look at my finances. How can I save? How can I invest? How can I be a good steward of the things that God has given me? So no matter what it is for you, my, my encouragement this morning is to show up to the fight. If you don't show up to the fight, if you don't show up to the fight, I guarantee you the enemy is going to show up. But I pray that God would raise some people in this place who will say, crisis, you knocked on the wrong door. Woo! Praise God. I'm, God is looking for people who will say, not today. You mess with the wrong family. You mess with the wrong body. You mess with the wrong marriage. You mess with the wrong church. You mess with the wrong group of people because David looked at Goliath and David says no one is, is, is going to fight. Well, Goliath, today you're going to die. You mess with the wrong people. You mess with the wrong army. You mess with the wrong God. You mess with the wrong one. Sometimes you have to stand up in your family. I remember a time my daughter, she was growing up and she was having this, these bizarre nightmares. And then she would say that she has nightmares of, of cats. Like when, when she explains the dream, we know that it's spiritual warfare. And she was three, four years old. And she's having these bizarre dreams and she would have dreams of people chasing her, running after her. And she, wake, and she wakes up in the middle of the night and then me and Danielle, Danielle noticed that these things were happening at 3 a.m. in the morning. Without fail, consistently, 3 a.m. in the morning, she's waking up and she's crying. She has a bad dream. You know what we did? We showed up. We showed up in prayer. We said, this is the wrong house. I don't know what this is. I don't know what's happening with our children, but this is the house of God. You came to the wrong house. And we prayed. We interceded. We, we fasted. We did whatever we needed to do. And then God, eventually, God gave us the victory. But it took us showing up for our children. You have to show up to the fight. You have to show up to the battle. You have to show up. And if I do one thing in this generation... I'm going to show up for this generation. I'm going to show up. I'm going to pray for this city until I see revival. I'm going to pray for this city until I see people testify. That's what God has called me to do.